Yes, I did like him. I thought he was a great entertainer. Yeah. But he had his, his, his faults, mm. which I wouldn't follow his faults. Yeah. I wouldn't follow him. Yeah. I wouldn't teach some of my boys to be a Cassius Clay. I taught my son back in the... But I wouldn't, cha- I wouldn't teach him that of his character. Yeah. By no way. No way. I will cane him if he had this character. But the bi- he had his own biased character about people, human, and logics. It's all about he, what he thought. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not about people's opinion, mm. about hurting. But his style of boxing is definitely something which I encouraged Joe. Because when Joe was a kid, I had a dream. Okay. I had a dream. When he started developing to, to 19 years old and we started went to football to boxing, I said, if I ever take home to boxers to become a trainer, I train people in three, with four fighting methods. We were my four heroes. Ali. Okay. Because of the jab, I wanted people to have. Wow. So, <laughs> Ali's jab, which Joe had. Right? Because Joe Sapo, I said I got developed the style of Marvel Hagler. Yeah. Mm, Hagler. Yeah. And I said I want speed. I said, there's only one speed person version, Sugar Leonard. Mm. So I developed one Sugar. fighter in three. Wow. For, and I did. I developed this jab with Joe. Joe, if you look at when he boxed old Shearer, yeah. Yeah. he boxed a world title with a broken man, a man one, with one hand. It doesn't matter how bad the guy was. And whatever. <laughs> to win with one title, you should pull him out. Norman, yeah. the trainer. Pull him. Why the can't you pull him out? He's my son. Mm. I pull him out. He's my own son. He could be you knew his hand was broken. I knew it. Took damn hands gone. He threw out some two. <laughs> I said, Joe, do the fight. Just keep it quiet. Keep it quiet. Shh. Keep it quiet. I don't want the referee to look at it. We got keep it. Do the next round. I said, use your jab. Use it. Use it. Please use your jab. Please wow. use your jab. You come around three. Use your jab. I said, Joe. Next round. Round four. Do what you do it in round three. So wow. round three, come, do what he did in round four. Wow. <laughs> round six, all the way through the wire. And he beat that guy with one arm. Now, that's not a world, t- that's a world ability of a jab. Speed-wise, what more can say in Sugar Leonard? That was a joke. Yeah. 100 miles an hour. So I developed what's the machine, I thought, that people are going to laugh about. They say, it's a crazy. You can't have a fighter so fast. In these days, typical days of that, Conte, yeah. jab, jab, cross, left hook, jab, jab, cross, left hook. That's the way to make a champion, they say. I changed that. Yeah. So people talk me on the back. This guy is an idiot. Enzo is an idiot. He, his, father, his son, and Joe, left to leave him. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. I mean, you heard that. Yeah, you I heard, heard that. It. I heard you it. You heard it. Because his style is all cockeyed, my style. Mm. It's too fast. But going back to what you said, it all start from Mr. Adi. Wow. Because he, I was his hero. Or he was my, sorry, he was my hero. Wow. But the boxing still stands to me yeah. one of the most, what do you call it, uh, courageous. Mm. Courageous, man. But I say he was courageous. So, but what happened to him? I think down to, I can't put down really through the boxing as such. Yeah. So, but he was probably helped himself because he took some shots. <laughs> he didn't have to take them. So you have everything a champion should have. Mm. Quality, yeah. st- um, style, ability, yeah. and charisma. Wow. So he stands, he does stands as, you know, apart from the part I said, the yeah, that, that character, you said. Yeah. as a fighter, number, I said number two. Mm. After Bianca Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say it. After Joe, after I get Joe. Size, <laughs> Joe. And that's your angel anyway, yeah. Okay. Uh, that is fair enough. Um, I'm going to go to this. Um, this is um, where I saw and you um, captivated me. I became a fan forever. Um, I'm a football guy, but um, there's so much I um, learned from you. There's a lot of, I'm sure there's millions of people that you might never have met, but you've influenced and you might never know. But this was what really uh, touched me. Um, I know um, after completing your national service back in the 60s, you um, decided to go around Europe, and um, you were making money as a, as a busker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did a lot of hitchhiking from one city to the next, and that was how you, how you came to Bournemouth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've come a long way. You come across as someone that is very humble. 
how, and I'm sure this will inspire a lot of people that are watching this right now, how um, can one get Sussex, how can one go higher in life from a low starting point and then still, still keep that humility? Uh, how did you do it? I think very cool. Um, my belief is that wake up in the morning, some may rise, may not rise. Mm. We still get cold at night, yeah. and we get darkness. When you wake up and go to sleep at night time, it's one day gone by of your life. You think about what's going to happen tomorrow, you can't live like that because that might not happen again. Mm. So I travel in my own life, my own things, just how the movement of life goes. Why not test the waters? Why not see what's around the fence? Why not see if from 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 numbness you can come to richness, from richness go happy. You you gotta try it. You got you gotta you gotta got live minute by minute. So there's nothing can you assure us if you go from where I came from zero yeah. and say if you go over there you can't make it mm. further. You know, it's it's about I think my characters I think was was positive. It wasn't about my dreams, my passion, I had no dreams, not some going to, I said, although I was a busker in, in Amsterdam and busker in, I busked in every Europe, European town. No dreams. It wasn't, it wasn't, I thought, well, I'll go to Britain to become a superstar. Nothing in my mind whatsoever. This is interesting. Was. It was nothing. It was just the, what I believe it was, my enjoyment of being alive. You know, there was no fear, there was no fear factor. You know, I didn't think that if I go somewhere and I'll, I'll cross waters, I'd know nobody, i see nobody, I don't know, I go back to my roots. Mm. And the story was, this one of these best stories was actually that when we left on this travel, I left what, Were family. you 11 that time? Yeah, I left, no, I was, uh, no, I was um, 20, 19, 20. 19, 20. I'd done national service. Okay. And, um, Everybody wanted to try the Beatles come out mm. and the new generation of um, type of music came from Led Zeppelins, you yeah. know, coming to war, mate. The real, let's move on. Let's test the Amsterdam waters, mm. the Paris and Belgians and Germany's. So when I come along, I'm le left with a friend of mine. Her name was Costanzo. Okay. And I, to say that, it reminds me, not in a vain way, yeah. but the way we're dressed, the way he dressed, the way he looked, tall, handsome, or you call it, I was 19, long hair, right? It's like, have you seen, it'd been like cowboys. Ah, uh, that's not for yeah, him. I yeah. was that's not for him. He was the other guy, handsome, right? <laughs> Leather jackets, walking around, you know, it was crack. We'd done all Rome, you know, living <laughs> the streets, you know, crack. Yeah. But that story had been told by lots of people. Yeah. Five ago. But the funny part was this, that we would travel all the way through city, month and on, then everywhere. We ended up in Amsterdam. One day, without him telling me, and this is a parting of the waves, right? Together, right? When I'm Amsterdam, in the morning, we sleep, we should sleep in the park. Yeah. In Amsterdam, and Dumb, Dumb Square. Wow. In Dumb Square. Yeah. Still, yeah. By the bridge there, sleep in Dumb wow. Square. In the roads on Dumb Square. And um, he said, I'm going to pinch some fags now. But he used to pinch them. He used to go break machines and pinch some fags, right? <laughs> So you get this pack, pack fag machines, you know, yeah. these are fag machines, the break fan. And I wait for about 10 minutes. You didn't, back. you didn't come back? Half an hour, they were there. Two hours. Wow. Don't forget, you're my friend from Sardinia. Yeah. You call him, and five hours, he ran away. He ran away. Left me there. And I realised then, they passed by. I sat, of course I was upset, you know, upset. <laughs> I said, I couldn't believe it, I just couldn't believe it. My, 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 you know, he's my right hand man, you know, my partner. Best friend. And I thought, mother, I didn't. And I had two choices. Come back home, because yeah. I've got a great family, I had a good family, he's not, I run away because my family's yeah. family, just where you go. I didn't, I had nowhere to go then either. Mm. I just, it's a bit away. I went to another way, England. I run away from home, I put, I won't be back until I'm millionaire. Wow. And I stuck that line on a paper, I stamped that, so I, went, I was ashamed to go back mm. without a penny. And I said, I only come back when I'm in there. And you think about the lie now. I still haven't gone back. I'm in there now. But the true, the story, the, the true story come on. Mm. I've not come back until I'm in there. And then my approach, I thought to myself, what am I doing?